everybody, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art sharp. And today I'm going to show you how you can paint this scene of a happy cat and a grumpy cat in acrylic step by step. This is a beginner's lesson. It's very easy. It's step by step. Every technique color mix is explained. We're actually using primary colors today, white and black. So it's not a lot of art materials. This is part of a beginner acrylic painting series. So if you want to take that entire course, you can do that. It's, a, it's all free and each thing leads into the next. So you would be really ready to do this particular painting. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. It's going to make sure that the cameras are pointing at everything that you see. So when I'm explaining a technique or demonstrating it, you have a really good visual of it. He's also going to be here to kind of be the beginner's voice. Hmm. And ask questions. If you guys have a question uh, during the show, be sure to put it in all caps. We will try to get to it during the live. If you're here on replay, go ahead and just put it in the comments down below. I check my YouTube channel all the time. This really is for beginners, so I love those questions. We really are going to break it down. There is a traceable, but I'm going to demonstrate how to draw these in if you don't have access to the tools for that. So everything is on the website, and you can find links and stuff in the description down below as well. Are you ready to get started, John? I'm so ready. Let's show them how they can paint this cat, the first of 10 amazing beginner paintings. So in this step, we're going to put a background on the canvas. We're going to be doing kind of a blue, kind of loose background. I'm going to be using a bright brush to paint this in. This brush is about an inch in width. This particular one is a number 20 Raphael, but you're looking for any brush that's a bright for acrylic paint. And you can kind of see it in relationship to my thumb about this wide. They all have different numbers and different sizes. And if you want to know more about that, there's a brush video in the series that explains everything you need to know as a beginner about brushes. Now to do this, I'm going to want to take a little bit of my blue over to my white. And I'm going to load the brush full of my paint. Notice that I'm doing the landing strip, which is pulling paint out from the side. And I'm taking my blue over to my white because the blue is a stronger color. And so it takes less blue to change the white. I'm just going to brush stroke up and down in long, fluid, smooth strokes. Continue on. You know, we put the materials image at the beginning of the video. But if you have any questions about any of the materials, we're absolutely here to answer them. And there's more information on the website too. Millimeter measurements, uh, other specifics, exchanges, things like that. So what we're doing is we're tinting the blue. Mm -hmm. You feel like the blue is very tinted, John? I think it looks very tinted. I'm being very light with the amount of water that I use. You can see I barely even got the cut, like the cup with any pigment at all. And that's because I've got to control my water when I'm painting with acrylic paint. Each paint has a perfect Goldilocks zone of water where everything is just right. And you want to get that in there. It's very nice. I like the streakiness of it. It can be a little bit streaky. We are doing kind of, we're not doing a thoroughly mixed background. We're doing a loosely mixed background and we're allowing the paint to have lots of streaks and different personality across the canvas. And we're going light first because it's really easy to darken. It's harder to lighten. Mm. And come around sense. here, just painting this whole background in. Now, you may want to paint the edges. Uh, around your surface if you're not intending to frame. If you are intending to frame, you can just do the curve of the surface. Whatever's right for you fits into your life. All right, now that we've got like a base color in, we can add a little more blue to it for personality. Ooh. See how we're doing? Just getting a little bit darker. That is nice. Some dimensionality to the background. Little dimensionality. And notice that I'm just bringing the brush up and down and allowing it to kind of mix on the surface. 
How much painting. water? Huh? How much water are you using? This is probably one or two drops. It's definitely not a wet brush, but it's not a dry brush either. It's in that perfect load zone. Mm. Um, if you're really new to painting, any of the terms or any of these techniques are at all challenging. I cannot encourage or invite you enough to come uh, start the whole beginner course from the beginning because we cover really all those questions that beginners have in their first year of painting. If you didn't have that uh, flattish wide brush, could you be using like a round brush or just kind of like whatever here? I think you could use, for this particular technique, I think most brushes would do it very, very easily. All right, now we're going to want to dry our surface thoroughly and come back and I will show you how to get the next layer in. So to get the next part in, I'm going to turn my canvas a little bit on its angle and I want you to imagine a little corridor coming from this corner straight across. That's the orientation our first cat is going to be on. I'm going to take, uh, this is a half inch angle. You could use a round or bright. It really doesn't matter the brush. Just a brush that you feel confident in that you have a lot of control over. I'm going to load up some black paint and I'm going to come here and here. Okay, I'm going to make a little mark. I'm going to come up to about the same distance on the other side. I want it as symmetrical as I can make it with eye. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to curve a line over. If I want to make it bigger, I'm going to go on the outside. So it's better to guess smaller and then enlarge, especially when you're working with black paint. And I'm going to paint everything in the circle black. This is going to be our black kitty. Right. Black kitty. That's a good kitty it's a good kitty so luna today mm. was asking me why the kitty's eyes were green and i and she was like you know if you feel very strongly about it she's like i don't really like green eyes and i was just wondering why you made his eyes green mm. and i was like well i just looked up what black cats most commonly have. <laughs> it was, it was the, a yellow or green eyes and i was like i just went with that i don't feel strongly about it mm. and then she's like well you should really consider blue next time luna is my youngest daughter and uh, my youngest child, actually, and quite an artist. So I suppose I should take her advice. Yes, she is quite a talented little girl. Very seriously. My kids all ended up being very talented. and Talented and creative, I guess what I should say is, because I don't really believe in talent, but they're very creative. And they have a lot of amazing heart and art to share. I'm coming here and I'm going to just paint that in. Such a if you're nice painting way. the sides, you want to paint it around the sides. Okay, paint around the sides. Yeah. And if that's a good size, you should be able to turn the surface around. And we're going to do the same thing for our white kitty. Now I'm going to uh, definitely wipe off my brush because I don't want to get a drop of water that I didn't expect on there. And we're going to do the same thing, but with white paint. So let's grab a little white paint. And approximately about the same size. And again, it's mostly symmetrical, right? Mm -hmm. We could measure exactly the same with the ruler. Push that forward just a little bit so we can see the bottom. There we go. All right. We could no, measure the same with a ruler if we really needed to be exactly. Like, if you are a person for which those things need to be exactly lined up, which, by the way, is there's nothing wrong with that. Um, how you would do that is you would just measure these distances and make them all the same. Huh? And since this is a symmetrical uh, type of painting, what's nice is that there's nothing wrong with making it more orderly. I'm going to rinse out my brush. I feel like there's a little black still hiding in there. Sometimes your brushes will hold a little paint. We're going to just paint this smoothly. Now, I found that this can take two coats to look correct. So when we do it one way, we're going to come back and do it uh, with two coats. Once we get the ears in, we'll do a whole second coat on the head. Okay. 
That way the kitties are very well painted in. They're very opaque. Opaquely covered. I'm not worried too much at this point about the direction of my brush stroke. I'm just covering this in. Now no. I'm going to start my ears. Okay. Uh, did you have a question? I did. Mm. So if it takes more like than two coats to get that opaque coating, is it okay? Is that totally just fine. Just dry painting? between coats. Um, if you're having any, tr <laughs> I'm going to say this a lot. If you're having any trouble uh, layering your paint, uh, we cover that in the um, seven preparatory classes where we do all the um, kind of techniques and things. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not unusual to need to do two or three coats depending on the paint you're using. To line up the ears, I'm going to imagine that there's a center line here and I'm going to come out and try to put in ears about equal distances from the center line. These are little triangles. There's one little kitty ear. You know, maybe your kitty triangles are bigger or smaller. I'm going to try to match this up as well. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. These are just little upward kitty ears. Upward kitty ears. Now, while this is drying, I'm going to rinse out my brush. And I'm going to come over to the black. Wiping off that possible hidden drop. I'm going to do a similar thing. I'm going to get some black on here. And I'm going to imagine that this is the center. So I'll come over out here and here. That's, gosh, let's look at that. That's about three fingers on either side of the center. You could do two. You just want to place it on equal different distances from the center. Mm -hmm. Now on these, I'm going to do something interesting is I will have to come back and add a little white insert in these ears so they can be pink. It doesn't really matter to do it now, like you could do it at this stage, or you can come back and add the white later. So for the convenience of your painting and my painting, we'll come back and add it later. And do kind of the same here. Try to have a similar ear. It doesn't have to be exactly the same, just a similar ear. The ears are somewhat of the personality of the cat, I feel. These are great first painting for all levels, all ages. You can do this. Mm. Now, when I have that on, I can come in and give my black that second coat. Even black sometimes needs a second coat. Yeah, I've noticed that. Well, depending on the paint you're using, some paints, uh, more expensive paints might have more pigment in them, you know, and uh, less, the more economical paints might have less coverage. So, you know, you just sort of adjust it based on what your unique situation is. I'm going to just do my second coat on the outside of the ear because I know I'm coming in on the inside with a little pink. Oh, yeah. All right. I'm going to rinse my brush out really well. Really, really, really well. Keeping my water clean. And I'm going to come in and do the same thing over here with the white. And that will be this step. If your uh, paint isn't dry, you can always dry it with a hairdryer. You might be really? like, why at this stage I'm not worried about the inside of the ears? It's because it's going to have pink insets. Mm. So, it's not important. I don't have to worry too much about my brush direction. You could curve your brush strokes if you wanted to make things feel more round. But it's more important that we get a nice coverage. We are able to layer our paint. So this is helping us learn to layer our paint. And to create opaque layers of it. How do you get the coverage? Hmm. All right. I'm going to rinse out. And two rinses. Get my brush completely rinsed out. And when we come back, let's dry this thoroughly. When we come back, 
we can do the bugs. So in this step, we're going to put the little flight path of the little cute bugs. They're not a specific bug, they're a cute bug mm. to make the heart. And to do that and to help me, I'm going to use the Dritz chalk tool. This is a Taylor's chalk tool, but I just picked it because it has chalk that doesn't have anything else mixed into it. Um, you could just use kids chalk uh, as well. It does not have to be this exact thing. So I'm going to come here and I think I'm going to orient the heart above the black kitty. I'm going to kind of space out in the middle and I'm going to make the V right? with my chalk tool. And I like this because again, I can erase it. And then we're going to come up, go down, arc out and off the surface. Because the trick is to make a little heart from their little flight paths. And this way I can kind of change the shape of the heart if I need to, to be more heart-like. And then this is removable with clean water and a damp brush when everything is dry and done. So to do this, I'm going to use my number four round. I'm going to get it damp a little bit and mix one to two drops of water into my black paint, swirling it around to improve how it's, you know, thin it is. If I was doing craft paint, I wouldn't have to do this step, but I've got heavy body paint, so I do. Mm -hmm. What you see me doing is the roll and load for the toe. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do dashes. All the way along the line. Oh, yeah. First black, then white. It's nice. It is fun. Just little dashes. This is kind of like a, you know, like when a plane flies across the map and they give you the little dots of where it went. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing. you're having any trouble removing chalk, uh, there's a bunch of reasons for that. And, um, but the most common ones are your paint is not dry yet all the way, or it's a little bit warm and soft and you pressed a little too hard. Hmm. So the trick to the removing any chalk is to make sure that your paint is dry and not soft. These don't have to be perfect little dashes. They're sort of a decorative implied line using just the toe of the brush. And because I thinned the paint well, it comes off nicely. Again, if I had a craft bottle paint, I might not have to thin the paint because it would already be ready for that. I'm going to rinse out thoroughly. Right, rinsing, rinsing out thoroughly. I'm going to wipe off my brush to make sure that there's no hidden water drop. And I'm going to come in and do the same with my white that I did with my black. I'm going to thin it with a little bit of water, come on the toe, and in between the black drop dots, I'm gonna add a little white. I like the contrast of this, John. Mm -hmm. The white and black dots here. Kind of feels even more like cute bug flight path. And if you don't love bugs, what you need to know about these cute bugs is that they don't bite, they're pollinators, and they're adorable and fluffy and uh, gentle. Mm -hmm. And they eat other bad bugs. Cute bugs are very beneficial. Yes, very nice bugs. They're very nice bugs. So if, if you're at all worried about bugs, these bugs are nice bugs. Coming off here. I've got this up a little high, don't I? Mm, that's and when I was turning the corner, when we were at the corners, we've got to reposition the canvas so you guys can see it really well. Okay, how are we doing? This is looking great. Pretty good, right? But I do kind of want to remove maybe some of my chalk. So first I'm going to dry this with a cool temperature on my hair dryer because I want to make the paint soft. And then I'll come back and take care of it. So once I have removed the chalk, I dried everything, I gently removed the chalk, I'm going to come back and add the bugs. I'm going to start the bugs with my round brush again and a little bit of my black paint. It's pretty thin from when I did it early. And I'm going to decide where my little bugs are going to be in their flight path. And I'm going to put maybe a little bug, uh, perhaps he could be right here today. So his body's pretty simple. It's a little ball. 
about the size of a pea. And I'm going to flick little brush strokes going radial out from the center, making kind of fluff. See his little fluff? Fluff, 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 Yes. Then I'm going to get a little bit of paint and I'm going to come from the front and very gently, I'm going to no pressure on my brush, my fingers resting on the canvas to support. Now guys, I know in my studio video, I talked about not painting flat, but the camera gets what the camera wants. <laughs> and if you want to know more about that, you can watch that video. But if you watched it and you're like, why are you doing it? Camera. Camera. Now I'm going to come up here and make a little arc line and a little arc line. It's a very fine line. Then this line curves back a small amount back towards the body. And let's join it at the center there. And then make a second little smaller wing, same arc, curve back and join. <gasps> Guess what? What's that? We got to do it on the other side. All right. Same thing. Same bug. Same, same. Number four round, find a place for that bug to be. They can be evenly placed or unevenly placed. They can be anywhere on the flight path that you want. We could even say these are love bugs because they make mm -hmm. a heart. But I didn't call them love bugs because I lived in Texas for a while and there's really a bug that's a love bug and it is not charming. Mm -hmm. It's kind of an intense experience, <laughs> the love bugs in Texas. Yes. So these are not those bugs. This is one of the... The seasons that you do not ride your motorcycle. No, you do not. This no, without also a big floppy. windshield. <laughs> <laughs> Got a, that's too much reality, right? Let's make those same little antenna resting our hand, little fine line on the toe of our brush. Little antenna's coming up. Your antenna can be any kind of antenna. There's no right or wrong of your cute bug antennas. Little arc out for the wing, arc out for the wing. They're about the same kind of size, but you know, again. And then smaller little back wings. I like that very much. Now, sometimes I personally sometimes add a few little energy lines, like the wings are in motion, but that might not be your favorite. I just like to be like, oh, they're flying. So it's just up to you. Rinse your brush out thoroughly. Mm -hmm. All right. And you're going to want to make sure that these are dry. It'll help you get that. But we come into the white paint, load it up a little bit. And I'm going to add a little bit of white inside the wings. Just twirl it around. That's really nice. The white inside the wings. Yeah. A little bit because they're sort of see-through. And I'm going to get a little white paint loaded on the toe of my brush. Right? It's not. It's very lightly loaded, and I'm going to make two little dots for eyes. Oh, cute little eyes. Cute little eyes. We'll have to dry the eyes again before we can get the center black dot, but we got to get them in first. If you're having any trouble getting the white on, it may be that your black is not dry yet. Mm-hmm. This is one of those times to know when the paint needs to be drying. So I'll make these eyes a little bigger. They're cute too. I'm going to rinse out. Okay. Dry this real quick and then come back and add the black center dot for the eye. When it's dry, you just come back with just a little bit of black paint. Look how little there is on my brush. Uh, can the camera show how little? Mm, I'm pretty... Hold on. Let me zoom in super... It's such little amount of paint, and that can be hard to understand. Tiny dot. Did you got it? Yeah. All right, so just tiny little dot. The size of the dot is helped by the point of your brush. Is the brush, if your brush doesn't have a sharp point, this would be really difficult to do. And if you don't have another brush, you know what you would do, John? Hmm. You'd use a Q-tip. Not Q-tip, a, a toothpick. Toothpick. Because the toothpick will give you a very fine dot. So if you don't have a very sharp brush and you don't have a dotting tool, the workaround on that is to use a toothpick. All right. Guess what? That is the step.
the cute, adorable, lovey buggy steps. All right. When we come back, we're going to start adding some personality to our kitty cat. So let's work on, let's pick a kitty's face and work on that kitty's face. Let's start with the black kitty this time. We got our black kitty. I'm going to move this up. Now we have our ears, our eyes, our little expression, nose and face. And I'm going to help you get those set in. I'm going to use my chalk tool here because it'll really show up over the black. So inside the ear, we're going to want a little triangle of pink paint inside. All right. Coming down. Mm, not too far from the top of the head, just a couple fingers, maybe a finger and a half. I'm going to put the nose in. It helps me to put the nose in first because then I can see where I'm going to put my eyes. On this one, we're going to just do a curve. And I'm, I'm doing this light so I can remove it later. And a matching curve, as symmetrical as we can do. It doesn't have to be perfect, just as symmetrical as you can do. And I'm going to come directly down from the nose and make a line across. All right? It's a small line. It's no longer with more width, width than my finger. Mm -hmm. Width than my finger. I'm going to bring these lines back up. So this is sort of like his little kitty smile. Two little, like a little squished M to do inside. Now, once I have that, I can do the eyes. So I'm going to come directly over from the nose and I'm going to make a circle about the size of a dime. You could make it bigger or smaller. You could take it up to a quarter, whatever you like. Right, whatever you like. So when I have that in right there, I can come in and start laying a couple things in. So the first thing right. I'm gonna lay in with my number four round, I'm gonna take a little of my white paint. You didn't know we were gonna paint some stuff white. Mm. Paint the eyes white. We're doing this because some colors are very transparent, naturally. No matter what paint, no matter what brand, no matter what uh, level of paint, they're just transparent. And yellow is definitely one of those colors. But in general, with student paints, they have that as an issue. So when you know you've got to have a bright color over a dark color, putting in a white layer can help it really shine and have lots of saturation in color. The other place I could put a little white to have something bright would be the nose. So I'm gonna make a little tiny triangle. That's the white nose. And then of course, I don't put the cute little teeth in until later because they've got a layer after the back of the mouth comes in. That's why they come in later. Now you can see my little M is filled in. And let's fill in our little triangles. Number four round whatever round brush that you have. You don't have to have my exact round brush. Now I'm going to take a little white paint out and I'm going to bring the smallest amount of black over to it till I get a gray that I like. Right? I don't want a white because that would be too startling on a black cat. So I'm going to make a gray and you can see I'm rolling it. Right? To get it loaded to the corner. If I have to wipe out on my paper towel, I will. Because I'm trying not to get paint everywhere. And I'm going to trace over my chalk lines with the gray. Maybe I'll move this a little bit to improve the ease of my stroke. Remember, you can move your canvas to improve the control that you have. I'm going to do a downward line. Light brush, brush pressure. All right, let's reorient that. What do we think? We've got that I first placement. Yeah. Now that's got to dry completely. 
And as an artist, you have a couple choices here. You could dry it and continue to paint the cat, or you could move over to the other side of the canvas and work on those areas while this dries. If you didn't have a hair dryer, that's what you could do. And I'm gonna show you how we do that by doing that next. So let's move on over to the white cat to do its first layer. Over to Mr. Grumpy Face. Ooh. So, uh, <laughs> this is a very funny cat to me. I think these, I like these two cats because, like, you can kind of have it on the what your mood is for the day. <laughs> you can change the cat that's in charge for the day, uh, the mood of the day, and it works either day. All right, so we have him here, and we have a similar thing to do, but, um, it's a little hard to see the yellow. We're going to do the same things, though, because the yellow will uh, give us a little guidance. So I'm going to come in and make some little triangles inside the ear. Well, that was pretty much the same, same, right? Symmetry. Here's the center. And I'm going to come in and make a little downward V nose. It's just a downward V. Then there's a straight line. It's about oh, a little more than a finger, right? Like about a half inch straight line down from that. And then two little downward V's because he's grumpy, right? He's grumpy, so you got to give him a grumpy face. When I have the grumpy face in, it's sort of interesting. I come a little above his nose, but not much, and I make about an inch long line across the top. And then these, these will end up being like downward facing D's. I'm going to bring a little circle to match back in, a little circle to match back in. That's all I've got to do for that part of his face. And I'm going to get my number four round. And I'll go ahead and I'll do my pink first. So I'm going to take my red, pull a little bit out. Let's grab some white. And let's make a little bit of a light pink for the ear. All right. So red and white make pink. Now, depending on the red that you have for your primary, maybe that pink's a little more coral. Or maybe it's a little more fuchsia. There's no right or wrong for this. It's okay. Your painting will still come out. I think that's like important to learn in art is that, you know, it doesn't have to be the exact same to be okay. It just has to be fun to do. And just fill that all in. You can see on the toe of that brush, we're just filling that center in. Come over here. Same thing. Mm. Nice creamy pink center in the ear. Now the other place I can take some pink and I'll add a little more red and white into it so it has nice coverage is the upward nose. That's like a little triangle right here if you can see that. Mm -hmm. Pink triangle. He's like, he does not appreciate that you think he's cute, but he is cute. I'm going to come into my black paint again, thinning with a little bit of water to create fine lines. I'm going to come across the top of the eye. I need a little more water there to thin it. So sometimes if you're having trouble with the line, you might need to improve it with water. Line the inside. Come across. And then what's also fun is we're going to come on the inside of the nose. Okay. Line that inside. Straight down. He's grumpy. Now I'm going to really get a fine point load on this. I'm going to come here and make a little inward triangle for a little fang. See his little fang? Mm -hmm. I'm going to make another little circle inside the eye.
I'm leaving a little kind of salvage edge, almost like a quarter inch on the inside for the blue. Get them as symmetrical as you can, but again, it doesn't have to be perfect because there's humor in this art. Sometimes when there's humor, you can get away with like a lot in your painting. I'm going to go ahead and outline the outside of the grumpy cat, the disgruntled, opinionated cat. Grumpy cat. He's grumpy. Maybe he's just between cups of coffee. <laughs> Maybe. For sure, he has his own TikTok <laughs> where he makes crazy meowing noises for his owner. <laughs> I'm just coming around making a nice little outer line. Let me give that a nice clean effect, right? Mm -hmm. Now, all of that's going to dry, and we're going to go back and work on the black cap for a second. So let's work on our happiest cat. <laughs> we'll get him set up here. And we're going to start doing some more finishing work on him. I'm going to go ahead and get into my pink that I made, my red and white, and fill in those little airs and do the nose and tongue. I'm going to start with the pink because that's my lightest color. And uh, that way, if I have any residual uh, paint on my brush, it's not going to get messed up. That's just a little strategy that you can do. Because if I start with the black, I really have to wash out all the black pigment before I go on to any other colors. Little things that we like to talk about on beginning lessons are those kinds of tips. I'm really proud of this series. Whether you've come here to just to do this really fun cat, maybe you're painting with friends or family, or uh, you're taking the course, I just really appreciate you guys being here. Don't forget to you know, ask questions, whether it's in the live or in the replay. Because questions always, always are important. I'll take a little more white over there. Don't you agree, John? Mm-hmm. Yes, he actually really does. He asks a lot of questions. Sometimes. <laughs> I can be nosy. <laughs> I don't know if that's nosy. It's more like, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> I don't know. Let's paint the tongue, too. Can you see how... Painting the white first allowed the pink to be very bright. I do. You know. Helped it. That's with your light. Makes all the paints just pop more, a bit more, huh? It really does. Now, on these transparent colors, we need them to be bright. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to change colors a little bit. So I'm going to rinse out quite thoroughly. I'm going to make sure I get that water drop off my brush. And I'm going to make some very bright green. So I'm going to take a little blue, just a small amount. And I'm going to add it slowly to my yellow. So I get a green that I like, very bright, luminous green. Mm. And I'm going to go ahead and paint all inside the eye. Now I'm going to have black irises in the center. So I could paint around them. Um, like I'm going to over on the blue kitty's eyes, but I found with a total circle here, it might just be easier to go green and then put in the black centers. Your kitty could have uh, any color eyes. It could have orange eyes. It could have two color eyes. As my, my, my daughter, it's just blue eyes. <laughs> but green. I just picked one. I was like, what do black cats have a lot? <laughs> green eyes. Green eyes. Green or yellow eyes. So. Like, okay, I can do that. So it's a nice green. This is more of a yellow green. So I made a little more yellow into the green than blue. I'm going to rinse my brush out thoroughly. Make sure I lose that water drop. And then we're going to mix a purple here. So I'm going to take a little of my red and a little of my blue, and we're going to mix a purple. All right. Maybe almost uh, uh, like a violet, a red violet. Mm, or we could go more to center. 
and it goes over the black. And the reason we go over the black is because we do want the darkness inside the mouth. Mm -hmm. Once I have that in, I'm going to come tint some of that purple with a little white, a little bit of that violet. Technically violet, but I often say purple. It's a good color. This is a very good color. Tinting it. Trying to paint neatly if I can. All right. I'm going to rinse out thoroughly. This is the chance you can check to see if you want two coats of pink on anything, mm -hmm. right? Because sometimes you'll want, even after this, you might still want two coats, right? You can see it gets much brighter, that second coat. It does. It helps pop it. Little finishing touches like this can be a big deal. So anything that you want to touch up. And to finish this, I definitely, definitely want the center of the eyes to be dry. So I'm going to hit it with a hair dryer real fast. Once it's dry, then you can come in and let's do a neat little trick. Let's get our white first. A little bit of white here, a couple of places. I'm going to put a little white at the top of the nose. Maybe a little reflection on the tongue. I can come in and paint. Some little white kitty, kitty fangs mm. with the toe of my brush. They don't have to be perfect. There could be one. There could be two. It's up to you. It could be symmetrical or not symmetrical. Because the fangs do as the fangs do. The fangs do as the fangs do. Then I'm going to go into my gray and neaten and tidy up the kitty smile anywhere that it needs to be. But sometimes when we paint inside things, they get a little messed up. All right. I'm going to rinse out thoroughly all the color out of my brush. All right. Let me come and get some black. Thinning my paint, rolling it down the edge. Again, just a nice flow. Good coverage, but a nice flow. I don't want any water drops hiding in my brush. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come to the inside of the eye. Paint a little black center. Okay, black center. Neaten up outside the eye, too, if you need to. Mm -hmm. If you're like, oh, my eye got, like, not tidy, you could come in and fix that. While I'm here and I'm letting this dry, I'm going to go back down to my white kitty for a second. Mr. White Kitty Pants. Yes. And I'm going to add a second coat of black to the eye. I'm going to bring that out a bit. Put that out here a little bit. Not comically out. Mm -hmm. Scissor seven kind of funny there. He's looking pretty good. Really is. Both of them. I'm going to rinse my brush out thoroughly. And since I rinsed it out, i got to make sure there's not a water drop on there. This at this point should be dry enough, and you want to make sure that it's dry before you do it. Or I can add a little reflection to the kitty eyes. Just two little dots. Isn't that cute? Mm -hmm. All right. When we come back, we're going to finish our Mr. Bumpy Cat. How are you guys doing? Are you breathing okay? Are you making sure that you're breathing? Sometimes it's easy to hold our breath when we're painting. 
Now, I'm going to be heading over to Grumpy Cat, but I do want to do a general reminder that you're paying attention to your body positioning and that you're not straining your neck, back, or shoulders when you're painting. Mm -hmm. Let's roll over to him. This is nearly done, and I'm kind of sad. We're almost to the end. Just a little bit. Just a little sad. <laughs> mm -hmm. But inside his little face, I've got to do some blue eyes. So I'm going to take my blue, and I'm going to tint it with some white. Tint it and lighten it with our white. And just pick uh, any color blue that you like. It doesn't have to be the same color as the background. It could be dark. It could be light. You just want a nice blue. Add water to my brush so that the paint flows off. And I'm turning the canvas so that I'm enjoying the strength of my brush stroke to where it's easiest for me. Mm -hmm. If you paint with a different dominant hand, you should do what is easiest for you. Any strategies that you have with your pencils or writing are useful strategies here. Oh, okay. I'm going to bring this here. And again, come in and paint the inside of his little eye. Sometimes it's nice to get I like like a lighter color. We're gonna put it here in the bottom corner. You can mm -hmm. see. We're gonna do that over here in green cap as one of the last touches, but we just want it to dry thoroughly. Now I'm going to rinse my brush out all the way. And while we're here, let's run over and give this kitty that extra luminary in his eye. Okay. Let's take a little yellow and some white. Just a little bit. And I'm going to add a little bit of that highlight in the bottom of the eye. Isn't that nice? Yeah, it is. Just a little touch, but it makes a big difference in how these guys look. Switch it around here. I'm back on my white cat. Rinsing out thoroughly. Now, for him to be grumpy, he's got to have the grumpy face that, you know, they have. So we're going to do that with gray. I'm still going to be using my number four round. A lot of this painting was done with a number four round. A round brush, a good round brush, uh, you're going to use a lot of. I'm going to want to make a very light gray. All right. So shade lighter than that. That looks pretty good what I have here. And we're going to come in between the eye. And the nose, and we're going to curve a stroke. I got a little excited there, so I'll have to put that black line back. Mm -hmm. Two ways I can do it. One way is if the paint isn't dry yet, I can simply come back with a clean brush and remove it. Do that. Another way would be to dry it, paint over it. But I'll do the cleaning and removing one. Yeah, oh, my blue wasn't dry yet. Clean, clean, clean. So when you have boo-boos, and they will happen... They do. They do. You just come back and fix your boo-boo. Look at that. Fixing the boo-boo. Mm -hmm. Back into my gray. Adds a little emotion there. Little emotion. I'm going to come over the top. Just little flicking backward strokes. See how they are? Mm-hmm. And I'm under the eye. Oh, flicking backward. And that sleepless that hasn't had a good cat nap in a while, just flicking backwards. Toe with a brush, heavy pressure on the beginning of the stroke, light pressure at the end. All right. Rinsing out thoroughly. I sometimes like to put in a little pink. I know that's weird, but I do. I'm going to come here and add a few little strokes of pink. It's kind of like a little blush in the grump. Works if it's See, light. Yeah. If it gets too red, it'll, it won't quite work. So you want to have it just be light enough where a little bit of pink can get in there. 
Now, where I had a boo-boo on his eye, I can come back with my black paint and my round brush. I'm really well rinsed out and just fix that. See? I'm okay. Yeah. I can clean up anything um, once the paint's dry anyway, so. Good, good, good. Very I'm happy good. with that. If he's grumpy in the way that you like him to be grumpy. And we're going to take a little bit of our white paint. And we're going to do a little under, little kind of half circle, right? So here, put it right there. There's his little circle. And he can have a little reflection on his nose too. A little white back in, maybe a little blend. I think he's good. Yeah. So now we get to decide where we want to sign. Ooh. Yes. Where do we want to sign? And I signed with my black cat. Um, another one I did in this series, I signed on both cats, so it didn't matter how you hung them. <laughs> Signature. It's just silliness. But I'm going to sign on the black cat. I think these guys are very cute today. They paint really well on a round canvas, too. I'm going to come here and paint my little signature. I'm going to use black paint because it's in the painting and it won't stand out too much. I don't want it to be too big because I don't want it to take over the whole surface. I could have signed in the corner, but sometimes I like to sign around objects like this. That's my preference. Very nice. You don't have to do it. You can do it. It's up to you. Oh, my goodness. Look at us, John. That is amazing. All right. We're going to come back and tell you what you should do next. I think you guys did so good. I cannot wait to see your version. You're welcome to share that with me online, on the website, in my Facebook group, anywhere that you feel comfortable with. Um, man, I'm loving this course. This is fun. If you just came here because you love cats and you saw this one painting, this painting is part of a whole series of classes for beginning artists for a place for them to start learning how to paint acrylic from the brushes up and the 10 paintings are sequential. So we have another painting that you can join us for tomorrow. That is also super cute. Would you guys like a preview of that? Mm -hmm. I think this is great. We'll have that showing there. So we're going to be meeting back tomorrow at the same time to be doing this live. If you want to join us for the live, that is 1 PM. If you're here on the replay, the I card or links can just take you right over there. You can find the entire course on my website, and it's all free. You don't have to register. You don't have to anything. You don't have to register anything. It's all the links are there. It's just something that you can find time for and guide yourself through. And if you had any trouble with any part of this painting, I highly recommend those first seven classes because they've covered everything I've been asked in seven years <laughs> as a teacher online. So one of those Q and A's is bound to help quite a lot, and they're all time stamped and chaptered. That being said, this will also be a mini book. If you didn't want to freehand it, remember the traceable and all those resources are on the website. John, mm -hmm. we've done painting one. This is great. The beginning. Now to do nine more. I'll see you at tomorrow's painting. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. You absolutely can do this, and I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.